The time has finally come for my LCM and HCF video. It's been a long time coming, but I'm very happy to be here to quickly and efficiently explain how to do LCM and HCF. What are they, just quickly? Well, LCM is the least common multiple, sometimes called lowest common multiple, while HCF is the highest common factor, sometimes called highest common divisor of two numbers. What does that mean though, and why is it useful? Multiple just means the times tables of that number. Some people get multiple and factor confused, but a multiple of three is in the times tables of three, three, six, nine, etc. Whereas a factor of 10 isn't the times tables of 10, it's a number that goes into 10. Usually smaller, not necessarily, it could be equal, but usually smaller, like five and two or one. They're all factors of 10. So as a quick rule, it's not always the case, they could sometimes be the same. As a quick rule, multiples are bigger, factors are smaller than the numbers. The least common multiple, for example, of three and two would be six, because it's a multiple they have in common, and it's the least of all the multiples they have in common. Three and two have other multiples in common, like 12, but six is the least of all the common multiples. As I've written down below, there are many ways in real life that this can be useful. I know you're interested mainly in the GRE and GMAT, but I wanted to quickly tell you this maths you're learning can be applied in real life. Imagine one pack of sweets comes in packs of 15 and another type of sweets comes in packs of 18. And you have a big group of children and you want them all to get the same number of sweets. Well, how many of each pack do you buy? So you end up with the same number of each sweet. That would be the least common multiple of those two numbers, 15 and 18. Or music. Imagine one instrument goes off every seven seconds, another one goes off every four seconds, and another one goes off every 20 seconds. When do they all go off together? That could be useful for music. More specifically, fractions. Imagine you're adding or subtracting two fractions with really complicated denominators. Instead of just multiplying them together, if you don't have a calculator, or even if you do have a calculator, that might be a way too big number that's not simplified and hard to simplify. Well, you use the least common multiple method to find the most efficient small denominator they have in common. Finally, for highest common factor, imagine you had one group of 72 people and one group of 60 people and you want to split them into teams. What's the biggest number of people in each team they could be that's a factor of both 72 and 60? If you worked out that it was 12, for example, you can split each group into teams of 12 and it'll work out perfectly. So this does come up in real life. It's not just a great method for your test. But that's enough of an introduction. How do we actually do it? Let's tackle this question. X is the highest common factor of 72 and 60, while Y is the least common multiple of 72 and 60. What's bigger, 30X or Y? Why are they the same or we don't know? Step one in my method is to prime factorize each number. If you're not familiar with prime factorization, I've done a different video on that that I'd recommend you check out. But for now, I'm gonna assume you know mostly what it is and only give a quick recap. If we prime factorize using the prime factorization tree, both the numbers 72 and 60, you get something like this. For 60, I've illustrated each step whereas for 72, I've skipped the answer. For 60, you could break it down as six times 10. It doesn't matter, you could also break it down as two times 30 or three times 20, but you keep breaking the numbers down, including six and 10, until you reach the primes. Six is three times two, and we stop there because they're both primes, while 10 is five times two. And then we gather together all those primes, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. 72, once you get more used to this method, you can skip straight to the answer. You know that 72 is eight times nine, and you know eight is just two cubed, it's got three twos. While you would know that nine is just three squared, it's got two threes. So that's the kind of shortcut you can do once you're more familiar with the numbers. Either way, here comes the most crucial step of all. It's all in the layout. I want you to neatly lay out those primes in two neat rows, like you can see on the screen. And the most important thing that I did that you can see is I gave a unique column for each unique prime. 
so the twos had their own special column on the left. The threes had their own special column in the middle, and the five had its own special column on the right. If you don't line up the columns neatly and give each prime a special column, the confusion will just become exponential. Just quickly, if you're confused where I got the numbers for 60, notice there were two twos in the prime factorization tree of 60, so that's where the two squared came from. There was just one three, so that's where the three to the power of one came from, and there was one five, which is where the five to the power of one came from. At this point, many of you are thinking, okay, Philip, I get it. I get prime factorization. I get writing out the numbers in nice, neat rows with a unique column for each prime, but what do we actually do? Well, here's the final part of the secret. For LCM, that's lowest common multiple. We want a bigger number than each of the two numbers. We take the biggest number in each column. We look at each column that you can see there, the twos column, threes column, and fives column, and we take the biggest number in each column. Let me demonstrate that. For the LCM, the first number would be two cubed because two cubed is bigger than two squared. Then it would be three squared because three squared is bigger than three to the one. And then it would be five to the one because five to the one is bigger than blank, bigger than nothing. And yes, for LCM, it's multiplied just as it was for prime factorizing. If we actually multiply that, two cubed times three squared times five to the power of one, we get 360. And what does that mean again for LCM? It means 360 is the smallest number that both 72 and 60 both go into. And now you're thinking, wow, that's amazing, Philip, that's great. But you're going to tell me there's a whole long separate method for HCF. No, you're going to fall off your chair when you hear that for HCF, it's the exact same thing, same prime factorization, same two rows, same columns. We just take the smallest number in each column. You want to try and work that out? For the HCF, the smallest number in each column is 2 squared, 3 to the power of 1, and blank. You don't write 0, because that would actually become 0 if you multiply by 0. You just leave it blank, because blank is smaller than 5 to the power of 1. So in this case, the HCF, the highest common factor or divisor of 72 and 60, is 2 squared times 3, which is 12. And that is how you work out the HCF of two numbers. Same thing as LCM, just the smallest number in each column. I bet you guys are amazed. If this was new to you in any way, by the way, please do leave a like and a comment. Finally, we can quickly answer the question, 30 times X, which was the HCF, will be 30 times 12, or 360. And Y is the LCM, which is 360. So both quantities were in fact equal. Because the secret, in a way, is so simple, I've only chosen to do one further example of it. But for this next example, I want you to really pause the video and try yourself to work it out. First, you're going to have to think about whether we're working out the LCM or the HCF, and then you're going to actually have to do it. So pause the video. It's a hard level question, just like the last one was fairly hard. And I want you to work it out using this method. So what's the question? Three trains each leave Cordova station at 9 a.m. Train A leaves the station every 14 minutes, train B leaves every 18 minutes, and train C leaves every 20 minutes. At what time will all three trains next leave together? By the way, if you were guessing this, say we're at a train station, and we're thinking, oh, I wonder when they're next going to leave together. I don't know about you, but I would have guessed like two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, like fairly soon they'll all leave together. But you watch and find out. First things first, we're trying to find the LCM here, not the HCF. We want the lowest common multiple of 14, 18, and 20, so we can see at what minute they all leave at the same time again. Now, I'm going to skip the prime factorization trees because the numbers are fairly simple. 14 is just 7 times 2. 18 is... 3 times 3 times 2, and 20 is 5 times 2 times 2. The key step is just to write the rows and the columns neatly. That's the one moment where most students make the most mistakes. Please write out each row very neatly with a unique column 
for each prime. If you get that right, it's hard to make a mistake. So hopefully you did something like this. Notice I had a twos column, a sevens column, a threes column, and a fives column. The order doesn't really matter as long as each one gets a unique column. And for LCM, do we take the biggest or the smallest in each column? We take the biggest. The biggest in the first column is two squared. In the second one, it's seven. Third one, it's three squared. And fourth one, it's five. Multiplying that together, it's quite hard to do in your head, but you can do it. Or we can use a calculator for the GRE and you get 1260. Of course, that's minutes because the question was dealing in minutes. That is a lot of minutes, right? Quite surprising. It's because of all those unique primes that we saw. For this question though, they want the actual time of day when it happens. So we divide by 60 to get into hours. 1260 divided by 60 is 21, I believe. I remember working out. And 21 hours after 9 a.m. is three hours short of 24 hours. If it was 24 hours, it would be 9 a.m. the next day but it's three less than that, so it's 6 a.m. the next day. And I don't know about you, but I was expecting it to be like two hours, three hours, four hours, but it takes 21 hours for those three trains to next leave all at the same time. Even though one of the trains is leaving every 14 minutes, and the other ones are pretty quick, they're leaving every 18 minutes, 20 minutes. Because of the unique primes, it will take 21 hours, it won't be until 6 a.m. the next day, they all leave at the same time again. And as I've written down below, we weren't intimidated by the fact that there were three numbers rather than two. It just meant same method, just more rows and columns. And I hope by the end of this video, you now feel very confident in working out the LCM and HCF. And not just that, you feel like you could apply it in the test and that it might even be useful in real life. That would be mission accomplished for me. Hope you learned something and see you in the next video.